Hello, my beautiful beauties, my wonderful lovelies, a pleasant evening to you. Listen to me. I came across a post of a friend and it says it is impossible to serve the Lord God without serving people. Let me repeat. It is impossible virtually, literally every way that you can think of impossible to serve God without serving people. Remember, Jesus said, if you love me, then feed my sheep. That's what he said. It is indicative of the fact that you have to serve people. Remember, God could have said, all right, I want you to understand the ramifications in a positive sense. In terms of when God says, love thy neighbor, treat people the way you want to be treated. And the reason why I I qualify my love, because some people really do not love themselves. You know, they may not necessarily treat themselves right, but in their heart of hearts, they want to be treated in a right manner. Even though they may not be able to exude it because of maybe low self-esteem, perhaps they, they went through bad childhood, experienced bad parenting, so they don't know really how to love themselves. They have not been able to cross or to hurdle that mountain, unfortunately. But deep in their hearts, they know what it is that they want to happen to them in terms of love being shown to them if somebody were to ask them just describe and be free and to tell us really what you would want you would hear the components of love coming out jesus said he could have said and i sum up the commandment as this that you love the lord your god with all of your heart with all of your soul with all of your mind with all of your strength because in other words he never really had to say that because it's really it's the obvious, it's something that really should be done, you know, and it, it doesn't really take that much, that much convincing, really. But it takes much convincing when we're talking about human to human service. You see how we treat each other as humans? No, you understand why Jesus said, and I sum up the entire 10 commandments in one that you love one another. That you treat each other the way you want to be treated. You cannot. You can say it literally with your mouth. You can even think it in your thoughts. But it will not. It will not. Um, spew. The realities of what God is really saying. So I'm using the word cannot really. To say that it makes no sense to. That is what my cannot means. In this aspect you cannot say you're serving God and you do not serve people. And listen to me, beautiful people. I'm going to take it a step further. Serving people requires making sacrifice. You have to bring sacrifices to God. And we're not talking about bringing goats and bulls and all of those things. Sacrifice is still a part of the requirement in God's kingdom. He only said it is better to obey than to sacrifice. And it really was talking about exercising faith in God and believing on his word, as opposed to coming with all sorts of different things to appease God. He doesn't need anything from us, really. You know? God owns the world. He owns the earth. So sacrifice is still a part of it. So your friend is stuck somewhere and your friend calls you and says, listen, I'm stuck somewhere. Can you come? And in your heart of hearts, you know you can go and rescue your friend. You go. You go. We live in a world where we're almost telling people that you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do. And I'm talking about in the good sense of the word. And then when years pass and we wonder, why is it that that blessing and favor that I expect to come is not coming? Remember the seeds that you saw? When your friend called, you never got up. And you did not go and pick up your friend when you could have done that. You were sitting at home and you know that your friend is struggling. Because your friend never literally call you on the phone and say, Hey, can you bring some food for me? Uh, can you purchase something for me? Groceries for me? But you already are cognizant of the fact that your friend is struggling, not working. Or even if your friend is working, maybe some things are, has happened. And they've kind of, you know, 
fell into a difficulty financially and you're able to assist you don't one of the things about um kindness and generosity it is something that has to be cultivated we don't not, not one human being naturally feels to be kind anybody that you see them giving and being kind they will tell you it is a move of the holy spirit one or they cultivated it over the years it doesn't come natural to be kind it doesn't come natural to be helpful we're innately selfish the bible said we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity that is why people can't just become lazy like that and not get up and not do anything it's because of the the sin in us so it is easy to fall prey to that so you have to literally decide within yourself okay my friend is stuck i don't feel like moving but how would I feel if I were stuck? That Those are the things I start to ask myself. Suppose I were in that shoe. Because if you don't do that, you won't move sometimes. What if it were me? And that is what, you know, kind of propels me to get up and do. Because it's natural for us to be selfish. Think about it, beautiful people. Anybody that you see, they're kind. It is a move of the Holy Spirit. Some experiences that they, they went through and they said, my God, I know what I went through. I can't do this to somebody else. Or they had cultivated that spirit over the years of kindness and generosity. The Bible says, you know, many of them are going to ask, why didn't I make it into heaven? Jesus said, when I was hungry. When he says, I, he's talking about, you know, he personalized if you hurt anybody for him. When I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was naked, you didn't clothe me. That's the reality, people. It is physical. You cannot say you love God and do not serve people. Money answers all things. And we know that about 90% of what we do requires money. Even if I take a shower, you know, I'm not taking the money to bathe. But you know that at the end of the month, I have to pay the water bill. If I don't maintain that shower head and the, the piping and all of it, after a while it will fade, it will rot, it will become defective. I have to pay money to get the plumber to fix it. I'm just showing you the, the dynamism of, of, of using money and how it, it, it is very multidimensional. Time is also important. You can't say that you love somebody and not spend time with them, not be vulnerable with them, not be real and true with them. I'm not saying that you need to tell everybody everything about your life, but you have to be real. You have to be real. We live in a world where I can understand because it's so toxic and people take things, information and use it against people. But look here. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers him or her out of them all. They can do that. If it can help somebody look more, use a positive as a stronger agent, as a stronger force, as opposed to the information being used against you. You will feel even free. As a matter of fact, after a while, information can do nothing. It is weightless and baseless if that is what you're fearful of. Because it would already be gone out there and it's stale. It will become, the, the longer it stays, the stale it becomes. So it, it has no effect anymore. But you can't say you love God and not serve people. You have to serve people with your time and money. Yes, people, we don't like to look. Sometimes when people don't want to give money, they say it's not only with money, you know. It's time and money. Time and money. How you give your money tells me how you value people. Because money is so personal to people. People don't like to release it. They like to hug it, hold on to it. And I can't, I'm not talking about being a good steward of your money now. We're not talking like that. Because I'm not saying that you must just spend frivolously or be a spend thrift. But we must be thrifty with our money. Thrifty with your money means you spend some, you save, invest some, and you give some. You give away some, yes. So your time and your money, there are other factors. But those two particularly I'm touching on. Because those are the two that people don't like to emit time and money so if you say you love god the only way i anybody the only way let us put it this way that god will accept what your sacrifice is how they see how he sees you serve people not so much what i think not so much what i think but what god is really looking at so your time your money effort and other factors is indicative if you're really serving God, when I see how you treat others the way you want to be treated, give your time and give your money. 
then you're truly a child of God. Guys, follow me on TikTok, subscribe to my YouTube channel and share this message.